Right, hello everybody. How you doing? Uh, first, a quick announcement. This will be the last video of the year because it seems like uh, a list video is a good way to end the year. So this will be the last video of the year. And today's video is going to be about the top 20 songs of 2020. Got my comfy on, got my hat on. We're ready to go. Set fire, fire! All right. Also drinking my hot cocoa. Also drinking what we'll call tea. Tea. Good tea. All right, so uh, top songs of 2020. Uh, first, we're gonna go over top five albums of 2020 because I'm a John Cusack fan, and five's a good number. So top five albums of 2020 for me, top row, sides there. So we're gonna go over here, Phoebe Bridgers, Punisher, uh, Jack Garrett, Love, Death, and Dancing. Uh, do, do, do. Bright Eyes, down, the weeds, down in the Weeds Where the World Once Was. ba -do. Airborne Toxic Event, Hollywood Park. And lastly, Idols, Ultramano. Ah! Now I'll say that of the top 20 songs, all the 20 songs could have been from these five albums for me. However, I did limit to one song per release. I will say that Phoebe has two songs on the list because she had two releases. And also before I did the list, I also reached out to the other two guys in the band, Scott and Dick Darling. They both wrote back. The one song they had for this year was WAP by Cardi B. This is one working with people. Okay, uh, I will say that Scott also did say a Phoebe Bridger song, which is on the list. And Dick Darling actually drove around and bought a CD. Yes, the CD people for the new Marilyn Manson CD. He says it's good. I'm not going to debate Marilyn Manson with Dick Darling. So we'll say uh, Marilyn Manson gets an honorable mention this year. So if you like Marilyn Manson, I guess the new CD is good. I haven't listened to it. All right, start start with our list here. List. All right, these songs are in no particular order. Uh, it's just 20 best songs I heard this year. All right, start with number one. First song on the list, uh, Hey I'm putting a new record out this year. I am, Hey I'm, I think it's Hey I'm. Uh, it's their third album. Uh, one day, Hey I'm's gonna put out greatest hits. I know people don't do that anymore, but it's gonna be one of the greatest, greatest hits ever. Cause every a year, Hey I'm puts an album out. Or every time Hey I'm puts an album out, there's like, you know, two or three great songs on it. And this year, the Woman in Music Part Three, they put out uh, the song I picked off that was The Steps. It's got a great video. It's a great song. If you haven't heard The Steps yet, check it out. It's one of the best songs of the year. Uh, also, Women in Music Part 3 is up for a Grammy for Album of the Year. We're going to talk about the Grammys later in this, uh, and what a farce they are. But I will say that Ham's uh, Women in Music Part 3 is a good album. The Steps is a great song. So first song on this list is going to be The Steps by Ham. Check it out. All right, second song. Uh, Reunions came out this year by Jason Isabel. I'm a huge Jason Isabel fan. He's the best songwriter going today. I will say Reunions isn't my favorite Jason Isabel album. It's a good album. I like the whole thing, uh, but it's not Southeastern. It's not Nashville Sound. However, I will say there were two great songs on the album. I really like the uh, song Be Afraid, which is the first single. It's the most rocking one. However, I picked the song Only Children, which is a perfectly well-written song on that album. So if you haven't heard Only Children, check it out. Uh, it's Jason Isabel at the top of his game. Also got a sweet video they just put out for it. So check it out. Only Children, Jason Isabel. All right, next song. Uh, Phoebe Bridgers put out two albums this year. She put out Punisher, which should be up for album of the year in the Grammys. It's not. I don't know why. It's one of the best albums that came out this year. Uh, the whole album's great. And I'll get to a song on that album later. But after this, she did put out a four-song EP where it's just her singing with uh, strings all underneath. Now, I'm a big classical music fan. I studied classical music for a couple of years when I was in college. Uh, so... I really like the four-song EP. I really picked any four off of it. If you haven't heard it, go check it out. It's great. But I uh, picked the song Chinese Satellite off that. So I think it's a great song. I really like the song when it was on Punisher. I really like it even more. It's got nothing but strings behind it. So the third song on my list, which is in no particular order, is Chinese Satellite off of Copycat Killer, which also has an amazing cover. I tried to get it on record or on vinyl, uh, but it was sold out like the minute after they announced it was coming out on vinyl which sucks, but I'll get it at some point. At some point I'll go on eBay when I have a job again and you know I'll pay astronomical price for the four song EP. But the cover's cool enough, just put it on my wall. So I'll do it at some point. All right, next song. On my Instagram, anytime that somebody friends me on Instagram or follows me, I always f follow them back and I you know check out what they're doing. And there's a couple different bands in there that follow me. You know, I check their stuff. Their stuff's always really good. And at one point this year, a group called The Popular Press, which is one dude who lives in New York, followed me. So I went and followed him back and listened to his five-song EP, and it's great. 
Uh, in fact, the song on there that's on this list here is going to be a song called In Queens, which is the last song on the five song EP. Uh, the guy's, I think, his following is smaller than mine for some reason. It shouldn't be. It should be huge. It's a great song. It's the way that the uh, pre-chorus goes in the chorus and it drops out for a second. It's great. Check it out. Song uh, called In Queens by the popular press. All right. As the whole world knows, Taylor Swift put a new album out this year. I am a Taylor Swift fan. Uh, not so much for musical reasons. I'll get to that in a second. I did like the people she worked with a lot this year, which would be Jack Antonoff of Bleachers and who's made, you know, three of the best albums this decade as a producer. And also uh, Aaron Dressner, whatever his name is, the guitarist from The National. I'm a big National fan. So she worked with those two guys and she put out the album Folklore, of course, which is her big quarantine album. It's up for album of the year. And the song I picked off that is the one she did with Bon Iver, which is Exile. Uh, it's a great song on that album. She just put out Evermore, which is a follow-up album that she surprised announced this week. And I've listened to it twice now. I think I like the album Evermore better, but I think my favorite song is still Exile, the one with Bon Iver. And I know I'm not a big country music fan, uh, but I follow Taylor Swift because I went to high school with her bass player. And he sold me his bass when he was going to move down to Nashville to be a session bassist. I was like, hey, good luck. You know, you're going to need it because, you know, he's a great bassist, but... You know, when you move to Nashville, be a session bassist, it's like a one in a thousand shot. And he's a session bassist in Nashville now. I uh, played in the first three Taylor Swift albums. Our trajectories were a little, dip, little bit different from high school. You know, celebrated Nashville session bassist, guy who sits in his basement and talks on the internet to 10 people. But that's okay. You know, the corporate world's fun. I have a nice house, good family. You know, Making a record in my basement. It's going to be fun. All right, next. Springsteen put an album out. Uh, he also made a whole movie about it. He put in, uh, what is it, Apple TV? I watched that. That was pretty good. Uh, now, I like my Springsteen to basically be like a locomotive that's about to go off the tracks at any point. You know, think off anything of Off Born to Run or The Song Born to Run or Thunder Road or something. You know, now his songs are very well written. His band's very good. They're all very well played. But there's no danger in the songs. You know, they're all, you know, very clean and, you know, very easy. Uh, however, there is one song on this. There's two songs that he written the se wrote in the 70s that's on this new album. And the one song I picked was If I Were the Priest, uh, which sounds like an old song of his. It's a locomotive that's about to go off the tracks. You know, lyrically, it's a bit wild. At one point, the band gets a bit wild. I like my Springsteen wild. I'm, a big, I'm also a big Springsteen fan. So If I Were a Priest, next song on the list. Uh, I'm friends with a guy named Anthony Recca. He puts out albums. Uh, I know him as Tone from Tone and Niche. I've known him since he put his first album out, local musician. Uh, hi, Tone. He put on EP this year. It's called Never Has, Always Will. Check it out. It's really good. I picked the song Empire. I know the song Lonely is a single from it, but I've seen him sing Empire before. I saw him screaming the word Empire. Plus, it's got uh, another local artist, Emily Rose, on it, which I like. So, if you Tone puts Empire on an album, I'm going to pick Empire. So, on my list of 20 best songs of the year, Empire by Anthony Recca. Check it out. Will Butler put out an album this year called Generations, which is, oh, there it is. That's that one right there. Uh, Will Butler is in Arcade Fire. He's a brother of Wynn Butler, who is a singer and main songwriter of Arcade Fire. And Arcade Fire has put out two amazing albums and others. Uh, but their last amazing album they put out was The Suburbs. And really the next great uh, Arcade Fire album is this one right here, Generations, by Will Butler, his brother. I know his brother, I think, plays bass and guitar in this band, but there's like 15 people in Arcade Fire, so he does something. But he had put an album out, and the song I picked from there is uh, Bethlehem. First time I heard it, I'm like, that's a great song. When's the new Arcade Fire album coming out? And I learned it's not a new Arcade Fire album. It's just the brother of Wynn. So check it out, Bethlehem by Will Butler. All right, next, Killers put an album out. So I know there's going to be three great songs and a bunch of stuff you skip, uh, with the exception of Hot Fuzz. Yes, Hot Fuzz is great top to bottom. But the rest of them, three great songs, a bunch of songs you skip. Uh, but one of the great songs this year was uh, Dying Breed. First time I heard that, I'm like, oh, it's a great killer song. I also really like the single Caution, but I think I like the song Dying Breed more, so that's a song I put on the list. So if you haven't heard it yet, Dying Breed by The Killers. It's a great song. Check it out. We need some drinking before we talk about the next one. T. Fiona Apple put an album out this year. Uh, I'm a huge Fiona Apple fan. My favorite albums of all time is One of the Pawn. So she put out a new album this year called Fetch the Bolt Cutters. Uh, which as soon as she put out, the whole entire world went, you know, the genius made another masterpiece, which she did. You know, it's not one of my top five albums of the year, but it's probably number six if I were to keep going. 
Uh, it's a great album, and I picked the song Kimika from it. Uh, my daughter heard that song a week ago. She's been doing, doing nothing but singing Kimika for the last week. Uh, if you haven't heard it yet, listen to the song Kimika. Don't even listen to the words. I mean, the words are great. You can always listen to the words Fiona Apple writes. But just listen to vocal melody and rhythms. I mean, they're next level. You know, Fiona Apple's a genius. Now we're talking about Fiona Apple. We're going to talk about the Grammys a little bit. I've never been a fan of the Grammys. I think the Grammys are a farce. They have been forever. And best example of that this year, if you look at every best end of the year list, top songs, you know, not this, but like, you know, Rolling Stone, NME, uh, New York, New York or whatever. Pick a big list. Spin. Fetch the Bullet Cutters is one, two, or three. And it should be because it's an amazing album. Look at the Grammys for best album of the year. Uh, do you see Fiona Apple's Fetch Bullet Cutters up there? No. You see Coldplay, Everyday Life. Look at any list this year. Top 50. You know, real big list. Not real list, not this. You're not going to see Coldplay in there anywhere because Everyday Life is terrible. And you can say, maybe I just didn't get it. But no. I mean, I am Coldplay's target audience. I'm a 40-year-old man who thinks Rush of Blood the Head is a near masterpiece. But no. Everyday Life is not a good album. Grammys somehow have that in there for album of the year. But, you know, a genius made a masterpiece. And they're like, no, no, Coldplay. Coldplay. It's fine. It's fine. I'm fine. It's fine. Fine. So it's fine. Also, Phoebe Bridgers is somehow best new artist. I mean, I guess I haven't been listening to Motion Sickness for two years. And I guess, you know, Stranger Than the Alps never came out. But that's fine, too. Uh, the next song is by an artist named Wachahachi. I think I got it. Wachahachi. I watched a video on how to say this for like 10 minutes. Wachahachi. I guess the name of a river, so the artist named herself after it. You know, a river that nobody can pronounce for some reason. But that's all right. She put on an album this year called, album this year called St. Cloud. Uh, if you look at a lot of the major lists, it's up there for, you know, in the top five for album of the year. Uh, one of the reviewers I really respect, which is, uh, uh, which is Stephen Hyden. He actually had his number one album of the year. And, you know, I listened to it. It's good. You know, it doesn't really sway me. It's a bit odd. But the oddness is what makes it cool. Uh, the song I have for your top 20 songs of the year is a song called Fire. First time I listened to it, I thought, that's neat. I listened to it again. I'm like, it's neat. And again. But the fourth time through listening to it, I thought to myself, I think I like this song. It's a bit odd. She sings a bit odd. But it's the odd moments that make it great. It actually sounds like a person in a room making a song. Instead of like, you know, 10 people and like eight producers, you know, it, it's better than those 10 people and eight producers. You know, it, it makes you feel something. So what you want from music. So the song Fire by Waikahaki. Listen to it. It'll make you feel something. All right. Next, the 1975. I am a big fan of the 1975's first album. And then they made two more albums, which had some good songs. I don't own them, but they're like each one had two good songs. You know, Sincerity is Scary is a great song. That's off their last album. So this year they put out No It's Not Conditional Form, which I feel like it's been coming out for two years. I feel like the single Peoples come out like four years ago, but I think it's probably just been two years. Uh, when People first came out, I kind of liked it. Then I saw them play it at a festival. It was the best performance I saw in 2019. If you've never seen that, look up People, whatever festival. I'll link it down below probably. And it's a fantastic performance. Uh, but People's not the song I picked. The song I picked from this album is The Birthday Party. It's got a great video. Uh, I think I've probably listened to that song more than maybe any other song this year. I don't know what it is I like about it. Uh, I mean, I think it's well written. It's got a good melody. It grooves. I like to groove. So they put out People. They put out The Birthday Party. They put out their song with Phoebe Bridgers, which I liked a lot too. And they also put out a song called Me and You Together Song. So I'm thinking to myself, there's four great songs I've heard off this album. This would be the album of the year, easily. Then the album came out and I listened to it. And I've, I've heard the four good songs. But Birthday Party is a great song. Listen to Birthday Party. All right, next, July Talk putting them out this year. I'm a big July Talk fan. Uh, their first album's amazing. Their second album's really good. Their new album's good. They stopped being a rock band. But, you know, they're still a good band. Uh, the album's called Pray For It. And that song on my list here is going to be Pay For It. It's a good song. You know, it's only the uh, female singer who sings. Her name's Leah. Uh, the guy doesn't sing it all in the song. But, you know, it's... Good song. You pop your head. It's got a nice video. Also, in the world of live streaming, we're like, you know, in night tonight shows or whatnot or concerts, you know, people are charged like 20 bucks to play a concert where they sit in their couch and they play the acoustic guitar, which, you know, I've, I've watched some of those and, 
you know, I love live music and I like to support my art, you know, the artists I like. Uh, I will say though, July Talk put a concert out this year. I think it charged 12 bucks for it. It was a drive-in concert. It was a full stage and multi-camera concert. They even had a drone camera. It's fantastic. They played for like two hours. So if there's any other bands out there listening to this, you know, Clyde Talk is putting out a concert with drone footage for two hours for like 12 bucks. Then you look at your other idols are sitting out there and they're playing, you know, for 20 bucks for like 45 minutes. Sitting on their, you know, with an iPhone camera and an iPhone microphone, you know, playing their acoustic guitar on their couch. So if you ever get a chance to watch the uh, July Talk video from this year, from the drive-in, check it out. It's fantastic. Uh, Frank Turner and John Snodgrass put out Buddies 2 this year. I'm a huge Frank Turner fan. I have a Frank Turner video for my promotional materials. Uh, I listened to the album. Okay. There's this one song on there called The Fleas. The Fleas is a fantastic song. That's the next song on the list. So listen to The Fleas. If you like that, listen to the rest of the album or something else. I don't know. Listen to The Fleas. The Fleas is a good song. Biffy Cryo put a new album out this year. It's right, right there. Uh, it's called Celebration of Endings. I'm a big Biffy Claro fan. I've also uh, realized I'm never going to make Only Revolutions again. I really like them just to make Only Revolutions too, but it's not going to happen. But that's okay. They're one of the biggest rock bands in the world. They're a fantastic rock band. They're all incredible musicians. The album sounds amazing. It's really well played and mixed. The songs are okay. Uh, the one song I really like from is Tiny Indoor Fireworks, which is the next song on this list. So check out uh, Tiny Indoor Fireworks. If you like that, check out some more songs. You know, they're a great band, about great music. If you really like Tiny Indoor Fireworks, check out Only Revolutions. That's a great album. I've listened to it like four times. Every time I'm like, it's gonna be great this time. It's good. Sounds great. It's good. All right, we're our top five. Uh, we're gonna start with Jack Garrett, right there. He put an album out this year called Love, Death, and Dancing. Uh, he put his first album out, what was it, four years ago now? It had a song called Weather on it, which is one of my favorite songs of probably this decade. Uh, the rest of the album was really good. It wasn't as good as Weather, but it was really good. Then after that, he went, got a bunch of acclaim for his first album. He won like new Best New Artist and whatever the European awards were. Uh, he went, made another album, which evidently he scrapped because he didn't think it was good enough or didn't like the direction or something. You know, and I'm always amazed when an artist like puts in all the effort and actually makes a whole album and just scraps it. So he scrapped it, started over from scratch. He made this album here. Uh, it's a bit more electronic. There's still a lot of guitars in there. There's a lot of keys in there. This is probably the album I've listened to the most this year. It's a fantastic album. There's about four or five songs in there I could have put on this list. Uh, Time, Better, uh, Doctor Please. The song I put on this list is a song called Old Enough. Uh, first time I heard Old Enough, it's got everything I like in a song. It's got sweet guitars, distorted guitars. It gets quiet, it gets loud. It's got horns, you dance. Uh, listen to the song Old Enough. There's, there's one song this year you're gonna listen to from this list. Listen to Old Enough by Jack Garrett. It's a fantastic song. It's probably my song of the year. Bright Eyes put a new album out this year. I'm a big Bright Eyes fan. And Wine Wake It's Morning is one of my favorite albums of all time. Uh, so they put a new album out this year. It's got about, well, six or seven songs to be on this list. Six or seven songs are just fantastic. But the song I put on this list was Mariana Trench. It's one of the first singles I heard off it. Uh, first time I heard it, I knew it was going to be on this list halfway through the song, even before the cold drum breakdown. It's a great song. If you haven't heard it yet, also watch the video. It's a sweet video. Mariana Trench by Bright Eyes. Idols put a new album out. Idols! Uh, Joe is the best punk rock singer out there right now. If you've never heard Idols, I mean, it's, an old, it's a bunch of men who scream a lot, but it's fantastic. It's a bit great punk rock. Uh, the song I picked off Altramano here is a song called Grounds. Another album I could have picked like three or four songs off of. But if you've never heard the song Grounds, check out the song Grounds. It's a great song. It's one of the best lines of the year. Do you hear that thunder? That's the sound of strength in numbers. Or well, the way he sings it. Do you hear that thunder? That's the sound of strength in numbers. But much cooler than me. All right, we got two more to go. Uh, next, Airborne Toxic Event. Plan to album this out this year called Hollywood Park. Uh, everybody knows Airborne Toxic Event from their song Somewhere Around Midnight, which was on their first album. Uh, since then, they put out a couple more albums, which I've listened to once, I think. They're okay. Uh, after the last album, they were either dropped by their record label or they were out of their contracts. So they didn't have a record label, so they know what to do. And the lead singer is also a writer. He was a music writer for years before he was in a band. So I thought to himself, you know, I had a kind of a unique upbringing, you know. As a music writer, I founded a popular band. At one point as a kid, he was raised in a cult. So I wrote a book about it called Hollywood Park. And I thought to himself, you know, I got this book. I'll just make the chapters into songs. 
So we reached out to the rest of the guys' this band. They're like, hey, you want to make an album? They're like, we don't have a record label. It's like, oh, we'll figure it out. So then he went out and he found himself a producer he wanted to work with. And the producer's like, but you don't have a record label. They're like, we'll figure it out. They went and they made Hollywood Park, which is probably the best film of the year. Certainly the best film they ever made. And I think a reason for that is not only because he's taking so much from his personal life and putting it in the album and making really a great concept album. Also, you know, instead of using electronic background in this song, he's basically using classic rock songs. So it's basically a great classic rock album that's been updated to the 2020s. So if you haven't heard this album, definitely give it a spin. It's a great album. Uh, the song I picked off this album is called The Common Touch, which is probably my favorite song off the album. It's a bunch of good songs off the album. But probably my favorite song off the album. Uh, it's definitely the, the biggest grand end of the album song. So check out The Common Touch by Airborne Toxic Event. It's a great song. All right, we're up to the last song of the year, which is from Punisher, Phoebe Bridgers. Uh, Phoebe Bridgers is certainly the artist of the year. Uh, if nothing else, she's put out some of the best performances of the year, the best performance of the year, for the song off this list, which is going to be a song called I Know the End. In the world where everybody's sitting on their couch and doing performances like that for late night TV shows, Phoebe Bridgers thought to herself, so she thought, how can I make everything bigger and better? So for Seth Meyers, she filled the performance of I Know in the End in a uh, abandoned theater to help the theater out as well. So check out I Know the End from Phoebe Bridgers. Uh, it's one of the best songs of the year easily. She's definitely the artist of the year. All right, that's the whole list. We're done. See you guys next year. Hope you have a good 2020, rest of 2020. I mean, it can't get any worse. But next year, tonight's coming out. So see you next year. Bye-bye. Oh, also, everything's linked below. So I think I have a YouTube playlist. I have a Spotify playlist. So if you want to you know, follow that soul-sucking website, I've got a Spotify playlist below. Also, all the songs will be listed below. So check it out. Listen to the playlist. Make your own list below, too. I'll check out whatever you put on your list. All right. See you next year. Bye. The hot chocolate's still too hot. Far too hot. That's hot chocolate. I decorated. Look at me. I look like a, like a sail. I'm very warm. Let me drink some more tea. Cheers.